Right. Really? Um, let's go to, let's go ahead and jump back into um getting getting uh through the beginning. Um, what did you think about the entire opening sequence where you're going through like the snow and then up until the village? I literally like, thought something was gonna jump out at me. The anxiety in my fucking heart. I was like, was I okay? So I started the game playing in complete darkness. Like I had all the lights off in in my room. I had like all of my blinds closed. And as soon as I hit that section, I was like. Hey, voice box, turn on my lights. <laughs> like, I, was like, I was like, no, I'm like, this is gonna be a no for me, Doc. It, it was like, so was dark, like you legitimately killing. can't see anything like past like what's immediately in front of you and your feet. Oh Are yeah, that, going- that beginning forest part was like had me. I mean, no pun intended, but also pun intended, it gave me chills. Uh, because you're just you're just like n- almost knee high in snow just trudging through this dark ass forest. It's just, yeah. And, and you keep hearing shit around you. It was very, yeah, it was very reminiscent, moving. Yeah, it was very reminiscent like, of like Blair Witch oh, or some were, shit. Were you guys playing with surround sound headphones too? No. no it, it, that is the way to I do it. Do that. You can see like, you can I see live like, alone, dude. I can't do that shit. <laughs> you can see like glimpses of, um, of like the lichens, like running past yeah. if you're fast enough. But, and then you come across one 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 bird, then two birds, and then a, birds. then a bunch of murdered birds, and then you walk forward and you hit mm-hmm. one bird. And he goes like it fucking screams. It doesn't even sound like a bird. It sounds like a fucking like alarm mm-hmm. going off. It's right. yeah. It's that, <laughs> and, that got me. as you're walking away, you hear it behind you, just like gurgling to death. Yep. Uh, th- their sound evil. their sound design is so freaking on point. It was, it was amazing. Yes. It's, it sort of reminded me of like, and again, this can also attest to the fact that a American person wrote Resident Evil 8, same as Resident Evil 7. Um, it it totally reminded me of like the opening of found of found footage films, where it's just like hella atmospheric, and you just see like a camera wobbling, and you hear someone like panting, and you're seeing shit in the distance. Like it just it just felt like old school horror vibe, and then just like the sun slowly coming out as you as you reach the top of the village. Like that's, that's an awesome shot. That's something I wanted to touch on: the fact that this game takes, takes place, place in one day, two, two days technically. Two days. Oh, just I didn't technically. Two, well, because there, you know, there's the time where you take over with Chris, but it's like it literally the whole part with Ethan, uh, everything he goes through is like a single day. From like sun up to sundown to sun up again, you know, and it's just it, it it's crazy that that much shit happens in a twenty four hour period. <laughs> um, but as for so the village backdrop was it was every it was honestly like, you know, obviously, I'd seen it from the demo. But um, it it was so grungy and so like just well designed. I don't know. It just it. I love the design of the village being like the hub and the central point. You know. Um, oh oh and, yeah, it was it was a little bit confusing at times though. I got lost even using I, the map. Like I many think that times. was I think that was my Me favorite too. thing when you're first getting to the village. Like you don't have like any preconception. Even if you play the demo, that that part's like not the beginning. Um, it, it feels very labyrinthian. It's it's like a maze, and it feels very claustrophobic and foreign. And you can, you just know that there's like shit lurking around. You hear noises. You see all the goat heads just hanging out. Well, yeah, and you like what Sarah just said. You even look at the map, and you're like, oh, okay, I can take this path. And then there's like a freaking tractor blocking the path, and mm-hmm. you're like, how the hell? What the hell am I supposed to do? So it's like, um, it is labyrinthine in that way. And I like how in the beginning. It very much is sort of like an on rail, uh, linear pathway that they're just pushing you through. There are a lot of cutscenes and stuff to kind of get you into the, into basically like the setting of the game. But once you get past sort of like, we'll say the burning house segment, once you get past that segment, that's when the world really starts to open up more. Um, and especially after the castle, mm-hmm. like, they let me tell you the marketing for this game was phenomenal they really did a really they really did a good job drawing people in i think a lot of people were disappointed at the, at the fact that the demetrescu castle was 
essentially the first main boss area that you go to mm-hmm. um or or area that you go to besides the village um I th- because I think- Sorry, they made it they made it seem like she was like an end game boss, you know. Um I'll, but I, I'll say this before I go back. I really like the fact that they propped her up so much and obviously a lot of that was due to like the shift the shift the shift in marking that is it was due to people being horny on main for tall lady. It was due to the horny um, people. But the, but the part I really liked about that marketing is that I like trailers to hook you on the premise of something. I don't need to see every single plot detail that's going to happen. I don't need to see the beginning, middle, end. And I was already sold. So I like the fact that so much of this was uh, there was, was there hidden. Was so much in the trailer and the demos that of this game that they didn't show any anything of. I I literally didn't do any research whatsoever before I played this game. Besides playing the demo and watching the trailers um, because mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know. And so. When I came, I, I knew there were four families. I knew there were four lords, but I didn't really understand what that meant until I came across each of their areas. And really what it, I like the way it was put in a recent video that I watched. It, it felt like, it felt like uh, I was in a horrific amusement park. Mm-hmm. The way that it was mapped out and everything. It's like you have your different themed sections and you have your central hub of Disneyland, you know, and, and you go to each, I mean, it's basically what it was. It felt like <laughs> Disneyland. It felt like resident <laughs> evil. But like, it, it, it felt like a resident evil theme park. And it was like, yes, to me, it felt like it was going through the past games, like the themes of the past games. And like, Oh, Hey, do you remember yeah. resident evil Four's fish, fish shit? Here it is. Do you remember like, uh, and like Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5's uh, crazy openings where the, like the endless enemies are coming are coming after you. Here that is. Like it, it felt mm-hmm. like it was going through like the best of Resident Evil and it's like theming. I, th- I think oh, you even I- push further past that. It's like um, one thing that people <laughs> really don't talk about with games uh, to the extent that I would like would, would be just like pure pacing. And just in terms of like both narrative and gameplay feel like they're constantly adding new variables, new verbs, new upgrades, exploring new areas, new villains. But it also just works from a narrative uh, perspective, too, where they do introduce <laughs> all those villains. You just like, hey, here's your A to B to C to D to E. So you, you kind of constantly know like how much progress you're really making. And man, this, this is a, like the tightest fucking pace game I've ever played. Like, I don't like the. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, yeah, you'll get like 120 hours out of it, but it's like one of the most horribly paced games I've ever played, and it just lost my attention almost fucking immediately. But this is just a fucking roller coaster ride, and it's it's just perfect it, the way it is. It is, and you're right, Jose. And even in the in the middle sections, when you're like, if you're like me and you were trying to collect as many as much shit as you possibly could your first run through, um, <laughs> I I literally found myself still very much enthralled with the hidden areas that I found that uh, that that allowed me to go treasure hunting um, because there is uh when you, there is a there is a necklace in in the game that has two empty slots in it or three empty slots I can't remember um, and I got one of them filled. Because I, I managed to go, I managed to go into one of the wells because one of the wells that you use the crank on, you can actually go into uh, down a ladder and it leads you into this like ancient crypt almost. And you have to solve this weird chandelier fire puzzle where you set enemies on fire and then you have to lure the enemy to, the a, to, to another thing so it can set that on fire. Come here. And, uh, Come here. Come here. Exactly. And, and, <laughs> It was just so like, it was so whimsical in, in its in its creation, and it was just so like, you know, reminiscent of of Resident Evil Four mm-hmm. as well because of the treasure hunting aspect. But mm-hmm. it it went even deeper than that. It it was like, oh, I suddenly feel like Nathan Drake, and I'm freaking going into a <laughs> hidden dungeon and finding this ancient treasure. You know, it was just. It, it it was there were so many there were so many different tone shifts and so many just delightful moments in this game um and the fact that you even able to go between a lot of tonal shifts like it'll go from pure horror to a bit more emotion to like almost like black comedy with like laughing at like how horrific it is and, and maybe i'm jumping around a little bit but 
when you get your arm cut off by Le- by Lady Demetresque, it's like a uh, one. It's it's horrifying because it just happens, but at the same time, it's like the it's the funniest fucking moment in that game. You pick your arm back up. You're like, oh, the arm 